Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Chiluminati Podcast. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined today by, of course, my two lovely co-hosts from L.A., Alex and Jesse. But more importantly than then to, than those two schlubs, <laughs> God damn, we've got ourselves special guests today. People who are <laughs> arguably more funny than Alex ever has oh. been. Oh my god! Whoa. It's Christy and Heather Holy from the Shit Podcast. Welcome to Chiluminati, wow. where we uh, are. Thank you. I feel like we've already made enemies, and we yeah, just got right. Here. That's what I'm here Thank for. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for reading that. Specifically, is what we told you to say when we yeah, right. that was, that was yeah. the in quotes like email response you gave to me. God, Mike DM'd us and was like, "Is there anything you want us to say?" And we're like, oh, "Yeah, there's there. a lot we want to <laughs> say." Got Start him on this with, fainting couch. We're the couch. funniest ones on this episode. <laughs> We no very pressure. specifically hate Alex. We just hate him. Apparently. For no reason. No reason at all. Make that clear. Just, just fire a couple across the broadside. <laughs> yeah. We love all of you. And we had so much fun when y'all came on our Freaky Friday episode. I was thinking about that. It, it was very good vibes. Fucking doll earlier. And Jesse, <laughs> that white balloon nonsense that oh my God. we still get emails about Dude, that. That was theorizing yeah. about what that could have been. Yeah, that's the weirdest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is absolutely the weirdest thing that's ever happened. Um, did you ever get answers about that? Yeah. Did you ever get answers about what happened to you, Alex? Like when that car... <laughs> Shut down and stuff? No, I got no answers at all. I have, I'm have, I've completely devoid of answers. Maybe more questions. Okay. Uh, I, I have a lot of questions after, after the way this episode has started. I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the fence. I'm on Don't. defense. I'm, you know, I'm all over the place today. And more than anything, I want you guys to know that I'm going to be heading over to patreon.com slash Illuminati pod where you can become part of this fine secret organization that we have here, keeping mystery alive online. Ad free episodes, bonus mini episodes after every Chaluminati episode covering headlines, paranormal news, anything crazy in the world, video mini sodes, like a regular mini sode, except you can see how dirty my house is. You can also uh, listen to our podcast, Rotten Popcorn, which is a good show where Mathis slowly watches the X Files while he tries to get us to uh, get into his world of movies that are worse than normal movies. Um, <laughs> It's online for everybody to listen, but if you want all the back episodes, uh, they're all available on Patreon, and you get Studio Electro bespoke art every month, and you can get a tier where every time we put out merch, you get a free copy. Patreon.com oh. slash Chiluminati Pod. Oh, a good pitch. Patreon.com slash Chiluminati Pod. I feel like we got to up our Patreon shit after yeah, that. Yeah, right. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to join y'all. There's so much stuff I just got to go hard. You know, I just got to go hard at the top because uh, I, I turned it into a joke and now everybody everybody expects me to go hard. I love it. You know what? If they want you to go hard, go hard. Yeah. Don't let them hang in. Yeah. Give us that money. Before we get into the topic today, actually, Heather and Chrissy, have you heard of Neil Breen? I'm, I don't think so. If you ever want to watch a Neil Breen movie, no. If you no, ever want to watch no, a no, Neil no, Breen no, no, movie, no, no. don't let him do this to you. <laughs> no, no, no. I for a minute I was like, who the hell's Neil Breen? And then I remember a trigger uh -oh. happened where I was like, <laughs> I was right back in it. Neil Breen makes terrible films, some uh -oh. of the worst films you'll ever see, starring I think himself and yeah. people he probably nice. has something on to yeah. get them to be in the movie, and it's not like. It's not like, uh, you know, you're watching it's like the bad room David and you're like, Lynch. <laughs> it's yeah. funny bad. No, this mm. is bad, bad. Like, Just this is Mathis torturing people that are forced to be here legally with terrible <laughs> movies. Yeah, this um, this fateful findings dot yes. biz looks like <laughs> something biz. I would be into. <laughs> Chrissy and I watched. Um, Tommy knew a person who had kind of self funded a film once, and we watched it. And it, Neil Breen is giving those vibes yes, of like oh, I have a <laughs> He's got okay. these wonderful political stories he needs to get out to the world, oh, and his what only whatever's in his no. bank account to make them. So <laughs> they're, they're not even political stories. No, it's it's like. We talk about he, you watched the minutes. end of the movie where every politician and businessman killed themselves while he gave no, a speech. No, no, that's the thing. Is imagine a movie. <laughs> that's an idea. That's like, I mean, I'm not going to say it's a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine a movie that's two hours long about a man going through it, but for reasons we don't know, and it's never explained. <laughs> Jesse, isn't that everyone in America? We're all going through it for reasons we don't You're know. You're describing my day to day. <laughs> is what, what I'm but, hearing. But he's hit by a car, and oh, is he hurt could happen or to not? Any of us. Did he well, lose? Yeah, he takes a shower real? with his giant face bandage still on. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> every every he movie is just him. Idea. It's just him. Every movie being like, 
Hmm. Somehow I'm special, and I, <laughs> I mean, <can> command, <laughs> and I can command women to have sex with me. Oh, there it is. Wait, command, command. It's always like a little bit. Oh no! It's always like a little bit weird. He, I, you know, it's it's a peek into a man's mind. <laughs> like, are you? I'm wondering if the actress is being paid enough for what he's doing in the scene with her. No, Paul, the those are no. non-union projects. <laughs> yeah, those are no. <laughs> it really has like the college is, vibes. The whole point is it's it's two hours of nonsense, but like every yes. twenty minutes or so he'll go, I have information that could take down the government. And that's all he'll say. <laughs> and you're like, wait, but what information? That's kind of like how and our show the is last too, five though. minutes, he'll stand <laughs> yeah. up in front of a microphone and be like this is the information that could take down the government. And then all the bad guys are like, I'm so embarrassed. And they kill themselves. And you're like, what the hell did we just watch? But what was the information? Yeah, did he say? Well, you, yeah. you do get to have a scene of him surrounded by four really old laptops, all of them powered off, where he like, has like He's a like seizure, hacking the wood. And he goes, ugh. And he spills his coffee all over and then knocks his laptops onto the ground. This can happen. But he was hacking. Hacking. <laughs> uh, I tried to hack the government. Don't and he'll hack tell the people frame. in his life. He'll be like, I hacked the government. I have all the secrets. And they're like, what are they? He's like, I can't tell till I reveal it to the world. <laughs> like, this sucks. He really does talk just like he has that, like a like a golf ball in his mouth, too. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's a method actor. He just sucks on them titleists. You don't know. I also, though, about every 20 minutes, make the proclamation that I have information that could take our government down. So just I can relate you're to at. that part of it. Yeah. I don't command women to have sex with me that part um, probably good it's like call. a middle-aged man's like lazy fantasies like i wish i could just like wear my soft jammies and like <laughs> touch my wife whenever i want it <laughs> it's like it's not even like it's not even like ambitious it sucks it sucks yeah. <laughs> he's lazy he's he's got vision it's just not a good vision no we don't not. need to see it <laughs> i mean you do need to see you should just once you should take a look oh, once just it. like one time accident. one movie one and you'll know whether you want to see the rest i don't want you to hate us i know like <laughs> on the on the other end you'd be like we got tricked into this <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like do you guys get like a kickback <laughs> If we will go on record saying we're watching this of our own free will, no one yeah, forces we'll us find to watch something this. If, yeah, yeah if we need I like that. Th that proclamation <laughs> is not as concrete as you believe it might be in the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's not binding. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> if you're going to be hacking the government, you should be hacking them for information about UFOs. Hey, yes. 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 thank you, because they're not going to hand them over freely. No, I they're learned. not. They're not. Um, they're not. Um, fact, moreover, they took them. Away, they gave us some, and then now they're trying to take them back. Trying to tease us into it. Takes these backsies. The, the shit that they're doing right now to, like, make everything as confusing as possible for the public is insane. And even trying to follow what they're doing, what they're um, – they, they adjusted the Schumer Amendment and made a ton of adjustments, then undid the adjustments, then redid some of the adjustments. You can't ungrush a grush, man. Snip, Once snap, you grush, snip, you can't ungrush. Always, <laughs> always. It's, it's insane. I could, it could spend two like hours. It sounds like Bill Breen works for the government is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Nobody I mean, understands he, what's happening. It's very confusing. According to him, he hates the government, but maybe that's wow. the whole psyop to begin with. There you the go. Fine line between love and hate. Right. Normally, we ask people who come on our show, like, what your level of experience is with, like, UFOs and the paranormal and stuff. But, like, we don't, it's rare that we have, like, somebody who has, like, like where we have, like, basically the same job on our show. <laughs> <as you. laughs> Accurate. <laughs> So, uh, you know, instead, I feel like we're just like, we're just like talking all the same language. We came on your show and it was like very like just we just started Me. saying like buzzwords and people's names to each other. And uh, I don't know. The topic uh, Mike brought today is is uh, is is pretty is pretty out there. Yeah. Uh, and, and Jesse, you're shaking you. your head over there. But I want to say I'm so <laughs> proud of you, man. I got messages the other day about you guys played a game about a an alien, apparently, on your YouTube channel, your gaming channel. We did. Nice. And the amount of knowledge you were spewing impressed people. Even if oh. some of it was wrong, you were actually spewing <laughs> some knowledge. And I had one message you say, I wonder how much. confidently. Right. Exactly. So it's, that's, it's how, that's all it is. That's all, all it, it is. Trust me. Well, trust Bill clear. Meyer. I didn't believe a word I said. No, but, but you I'm just you retained know what it. to say based on the insanity that comes out of your mouth. So thank you. Really. No, that just means a piece of useful information was overwritten by what I taught you. Instead. You think there's no. useful information up here, bro? You were a history no. teacher at some point. There had at to have been point. useful information somewhere in there. That was that was 15 years ago. That's all gone. <laughs> just oh, give up some of your. So Jesse, are you a you're a non-believer? You don't believe that there's extraterrestrials? I'm a believer in extraterrestrials. I'm a not believer in human beings telling actual true stories he's our token I same think person most okay. of the okay. 
stuff that that we're told is BS by people who just want attention. But you know, mentally. that's that's yeah, where I'm at times. mentally. Sure, but yeah, yeah sure. There's definitely aliens out there. The universe is too big for there not to be. Yeah, sure, makes sense. I and totally agree. Are here. As is the ocean. <laughs> yeah, some of them are here on <laughs> <Yeah>. Earth. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Speaking of which. I don't know if this is a thing that we should be doing in the bonus show, but last night at like midnight in bed, scrolling through Reddit, I see this ridiculous post on r slash high strangeness. I love that subreddit called they're coming December 23rd. Yes, I saw this. (laughs) It is this ridiculous post where a guy is a ham radio operator. Best of us. And and this is why I'm saying this, because when you said they're here right now, this is very important, I think, to all of us. He's a ham operator. (laughs) And uh, he was like going through a bunch of stuff and he found a number code and he started going through the number code stuff. And people realized it's some sort of hex decimals, something or other. And they translated it. And this is the dumbed down version without getting too much into it. It is basically. I saw this. I saw this. Canine aliens are here on oh, Earth and Jesus. they are among us now and they just want us to think they're good boys. That's basically yeah. what it translates like, literally to. Literally dogs like, are aliens. We, uh, <laughs> we mean you aliens. no harm. We are peaceful. We are like you, except we are canine. We, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we love you. We want you to love us, essentially. Like, Accurate. All I peaceful. Do. All very peaceful. And if, if the big like, secret that's, that's true, with my fucking dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's the secret she just is like dimension. <laughs> <laughs> she's <laughs> she's <laughs> <alien>. <laughs> not used to this. so happy. Furries are going to yeah, be it's, so it's, happy. Uh, <laughs> her microbiome needs to yeah. change to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> the, the if dogs are the aliens, that'd things. be the greatest story. That. That. I would be so happy. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is what we need. Yeah. And it says they're they're going to arrive and make themselves known on December 23rd, so in 10 days. Well, I will make sure. I can't wait for that not to happen. To Santa. But honestly, My that's, that's a, maybe we'll talk more about it in the mini-sode, but that, that it does tie into today pretty well, because the specific topic we're going to be talking about, either UFOs, is specifically underwater UFOs, or USOs. Yes. Now, in the past about five years, I'd say the idea of USOs and UFOs being different has kind of dissipated. And for the most part, there's an understanding that they're likely one and the same thing as there's a lot more footage of them being a transmedium craft coming from the skies, going into the water or coming from the water and then out and then back into the skies, potentially into space. Who effing knows? But UFOs for a long time were kind of like, or USOs rather for a long time were kind of like the, the less studied, like less cared about ones. UFOs kind of dominated. So I'm curious, like, as Alex is kind of asking, uh, what do you two know, Heather and Christy, about USOs? You guys have been like, you said you were deep into this recently. So I'm curious, like, <laughs> what brought you in? Like, why are you so deep in? What do you know? Well, we covered the... Uh, <gasps> what got us started on it? It's the aerial school UFO incident, That's, which yeah. we talked about when you all yep. were on our show as well. So but, crazy. Uh, but in relation to that, because I guess it looked kind of watery. And then on our re- research for that, we found where people were referring to underwater, possibly the, the craft took off and would instead of going up into space and that's why you didn't see anymore, it takes off and then goes down in the ocean. And we were lucky enough to interview Randall Nickerson, who produced and directed the documentary, the aerial school phenomenon or it's called aerial phenomenon. And we were, thank God Christy says, Hey, like, what do you think about underwater bases? And he was like, they exist. They absolutely exist. And we are so pleased that we asked. (laughs) That's a bold, that's a bold thing to just say. They, they are real. He, he, I felt safe with him. I love that. Given his (laughs) background i was like i feel like i can ask this man he's gonna be like oh yeah 100 percent." he was no question about it you were right and we were like thank you when the vibe is strong the vibe is strong yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> we felt it. it makes sense to us though because i mean only five percent of oceans are explored like 75 percent of earth is covered in oceans how are we to know what's out there it's just impossible and now I watched a History Channel episode <laughs> earlier. Apparently, they've That's got underwater plasma ideas. tunnels yeah. that allow them to get from country to country. It's very efficient. Wow. And it also, they have a um, force field around their ships, so they don't even have to get wet. Isn't that the no, plot of Total Recall? That's intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, yeah, like a UFO or USO condom. Yes. So they can get yeah. in and out. Nothing. Nothing's on them. In and out quick, no must, no fuss. <laughs> Remember when the History Channel was about like, 
documentaries on Napoleon. George Washington yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember watching yeah. slow motion. So long like, ago, but yes. They're playing violins and they're like, and on the battlefield that day. And now it's a guy in aviators and a ball cap and a, he had a bomber jacket on with a patch. And on the patch was a devil wielding a flamethrower. And Hell it was yeah. the coolest patch Fuck. I've ever seen. Yes. And his hat said UFO Magazine. Yep. And he is the publisher. His name is Bill Burns. And I want to be friends with him. he is something else. Yeah. I always wonder why people have a hard time taking Taking us seriously, right. it's really a fascinating. <laughs> right. I would question. take that motherfucker seriously. Are you kidding I'd me? I'd be afraid not to if he was in person. He he was intense. He <laughs> he was intense. He just screams at the camera every time he's talking. <laughs> that's that's how you get information across effectively. I've learned if you just scream loud enough. Yeah. You'll oh just Jesse gives up and he stops trying to fight. It just works really well. <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> slash two ninety pod. pod. Thank you to today's sponsor, Nuts.com. Do you wish you could go to Willy Wonka's Candy Factory? And no, not the new movie, but I mean, maybe. Maybe the new movie, but you can get pretty close to Willy Wonka's Candy Factory outside of the new movie with Nuts.com. And, you know, since you can't go to Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, let's just introduce you to what is kind of like the online version of that with Nuts.com. In addition to an amazing selection of nuts, they have tons of classic candies like butterscotch, fudge, and licorice. And sure, at the grocery store you can get pecans, but don't you want bourbon pecans, sweet and spicy pecans, pecan brittle, or butter toffee pecans? If you're eager to try these, just head over to Nuts.com to see hundreds of different varieties on nuts that they offer. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and so much more. They're basically my snack plug. Their wide selection means there's something for everyone. And Nuts.com offers plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other diet-friendly products. Whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or need to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you're bound to find something to try. At Nuts.com, quality is their top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships so that they reach you deliciously fresh and satisfaction is guaranteed. And right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com slash chill. So go check out all the delicious options at Nuts.com slash chill. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you get that order of $29 or more. That's it. Nuts.com slash chill. Help us help you put nuts in your mouth and help nuts. You know, thank you to nuts.com for sponsoring the episode. Yeah, USOs are been, have been around for actually like a really, really long time. And uh, are you familiar with the recent 4chan post that was from a few months back? That talks about underwater uh, base that generated like UFOs per spec. Jesse, I, uh, uh, not Jesse, talked myself, about it sure. Alex we've talked about Sam, it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about it. But, I am not. I'm not familiar. Okay. So I am good luck trying to find the post. The post has been removed. I can't find a screenshot of it. Anywhere. It's the guy who was saying he was reverse engineering the craft. So, right? yeah, so, so the guy who was so working, not doing it is what you're saying. Some guy went and lied on 4chan. <laughs> well, yeah, of course you take it with a pinch of salt. Were you there in the comments too? I think I saw you there. 4chan <laughs> doesn't take anything down, but if the government takes it off of 4chan, Damn, that's how you know they were no. getting close. Oh no! Yeah, the, 4chan. The long everything short goes. of it was like basically this guy posted. He's he's basically you know classic 4chan post. He's dying of cancer. He doesn't want to hold his secrets anymore. He worked with this you know branch of the government for a long time. And basically said, like, what they know is that out in the deep waters, there's this this giant structure that occasionally surfaces and little drones will get kind of popped out and it'll sink back down. And those drones kind of pop out of the water and they go off and do their thing. It's been around for at least 100 years. And what they've been able to at least try and kind of figure out is that what they think it's doing is it's completely automated, likely controlled by uh, like a computer system, potentially an AI. And what it does is it, when you see UFOs and USOs, uh, they are unmanned drones most of the time, and they're created for spec. Like built to so, task. Yeah. Built to task. Exactly. Which oh, is a lot of the reasons they are built to be destroyed or they'll crash when they're done. Crash. It's all purposely built to just be disposed of like afterward. Trash, yeah. And hopefully just the tech is destroyed where we don't understand it. Um, mm. And so these and they, they say there's different kinds of drones. You know, you're talking the Tic Tac shape comes out of those things. Sometimes like the little spheres come out of it. And that they've attempted to approach it with aircraft occasionally. And if they get too close, it tries to, it defends itself and keeps it, you know, basically set away. And if you do approach aggressively, it will sink quickly back into the water. And you might not see it for months later if you try to like be aggressive with it. So it'll disappear for a while before it'll end up resurfacing and then doing what it was doing prior. 
It's like a little so deer. So, what is its, is its purpose to gather information? Yeah. So, we uh, the, basically, the post doesn't really know. They think that it builds drones that go out to maybe like scan areas, get information. Well, it's part of the it's part of the mythology of that post is that idea that we were talking about about the aliens having some sort of knowledge about an energy that the planet has. That's like the consciousness of the planet's energy that we're all expressions. Final of. Fantasy Seven. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh man, you're talking my husband's language now. <laughs> the underwater base and the genetics post are totally separate. Yeah, I think. That, I, I, but I think that one's on the underwater post. No, they, that's they, the guy from the genetics post because he got the debrief with the papers and he read in the front of the papers debrief. this this <laughs> tertiary it. note from the guy who had trying to study what they were here for. That's totally different. I promise. Mike is the keeper of the knowledge, and I love that's it. That's the only like, thing I, actually, I got that in like video games, and that's all I can like hold in my brain. I do feel like they could be connected in a way, though, where oh, yeah. the aliens do know of a oh yeah energy force field that's like running the planet. Otherwise, why are they fucking with us? They wouldn't be that, here. <laughs> that post is awesome too, which I think you can actually still find that and one. I've got right here if you want. The guy worked at Battelle Institute, and he was saying what his job was was to try and figure out their genetic code, like the DNA of these creatures. They said they had remains of, of actual biological creatures, but he said they weren't like perfectly preserved bodies. He said they were bodies that you would imagine. He imagines what a motorcycle accident would look like to oh, these things oh, no. that were mangled and destroyed. But all he was trying to do was trying to figure out their genetic codes, their whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but when he was getting debriefed, they got a, he got a bunch of information. And one of the booklets there, like one of the scientists was just trying to study like why they're here, what they're doing, what doing what they're doing. He said um, the person he said to take it with a grain of salt. But what they believe that they're doing here is kind of studying uh, life as a fact facet of science in that as life proliferates on a planet, it generates this kind of energy field. And as there's more and more life, it gets, you know, the field gets bigger and bigger. But as sentient life begins to pop up, this energy field starts to express itself through sentient beings and through mm. that ex feedback loop experience. This energy field has a reverse entropy kind of thing. And then when it reaches what they consider an APOP, like a, uh, 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 the, like the peak pinnacle of whenever it happens, something happens, but we don't know what. And that's what the grays are trying to study. The big bang. They're trying to figure Perhaps out like what happens. The collective consciousness kind of idea. Cause mm -hmm, my old man used to always say, I hate people. People are sheep. They all think the same <laughs> yeah. way. And it turns out he was right. He was just more advanced than the aliens. No, correct. So yeah, yeah. We're you're all, right, dad. Well, that's, that's, the, yeah, that's the idea. It's like we're all kind of like a piece of this consciousness thing experiencing itself wow. to grow. But that was a note written on a, uh, like a booklet that had no backing from a guy posting on 4chan with no yeah. evidence that he is who he says he is. So it's a person. It's not, you know, you can't so really take that. So it's very legitimate. It's extremely legitimate. Exactly. Uh, yeah, underwater UFO post was just this guy kind of going through talking about it. And then for a while, he answered the question, uh, questions of people. And I've got a list of them here. We'll go over a couple of them. There's a yeah. huge amount of questions that we could go over, but we're not going to bother to go over them all right now. Um, but a lot of the things you might be asking are like, you know, uh, things like, do you, they know who or what is creating the craft? And the guy simply says, yes, as mentioned earlier, it's a mobile construction unit that's responsible for the deployment and construction of drones of, of multiple origins. Uh, and as they ask if any potential that they are made by a higher branch of government or the U S he simply says, absolutely not. And he says, what allows them to fly so fast is like, we kind of suspect with a lot of these UFOs. It's a sort of gravity manipulation engine mm. or technology that they're not, there's no like propulsion system, which is why you're not seeing any heat signatures or any sort of like evidence that there's Noise. a propulsion system behind them. They yeah. simply are moving because they have the technology to manipulate gravity. And I imagine if you keep creating the set for like force of gravity in front of you, it just kind of pulls you forward. And you can That's stop what it in a dime. I was thinking the other day when I was like, "How do these? Uh, <laughs> what how do you travel?" What you were thinking the, yeah. other, <laughs> the other? No, the other day I was like, Mulling it over. I was like, when we <laughs> when you know, like an airplane or whatever, you you kind of are sucking the air through the engines. You need to figure out how to do that, but with gravity. And if you could do that, then you could mm. really travel super far. Because we were watching all thing about black holes and like interstellar travel. My husband's very into astronomy stuff, and so as he was watching, it, I was like, I wonder how the aliens use this. Where uh, where's this base <laughs> located that your the four chan fellow was talking about? Like, where what? else but the Bermuda Triangle? That's right. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Is it near a military base? Because Randall told us that oftentimes these are found near near military bases mm. because he goes, oh, well, think about it. if you were going to go into a foreign country, you would want to be near and like keep an eye on their military capability. So it's probably down there. Guantanamo. I just, I just want to point out for the record, just to point <laughs> this out, that 
uh, I don't know how many years ago it was. Maybe only one year. Time has no meaning. But yeah. um, we had a delightful guest on who's from Bermuda, from yes. that region. What? And he was like, we don't talk. There is no like Bermuda Triangle yeah. thing here. It's not a thing we even we We're like not, laugh like, at it. We don't think about so it. So I'm yeah. just putting it out there. This yeah. seems a very like. It's weird down there, American thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to put that out there before we continue. Well, of course, that's where it is, the Bermuda Triangle. Well, that's what right, the History Channel, they were focusing mm-hmm. quite a lot on Guantanamo Bay and nearby yes. waters, which wouldn't you know, it's quite convenient when they try to reach out to the Cuban government and they're like, the Cuban government won't give us random Americans, even with his <laughs> flamethrower devil patch. They did not want to give them <laughs> secret military files about what could be under the water near Guantanamo in fact, Bay. they showed the actual document and said we want no part in this <laughs> <Email>. whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy because yeah. our relations with cuba are amazing Tight. it's always so good. good yeah always they're our friends so it's, what are they it's hiding? bizarre but after all the havana syndrome shit i'm sure they love us they're like please stop using our name for that <laughs> but they said there was a an an intersecting X underneath the ocean surface that a top ranking government official was able to see with, you know, imagery and that they say, if you follow the trajectory, it goes straight to Guantanamo Bay, almost like a, like the tunnel system would. Mm -hmm. And then (laughs) they had him, where did they go from? Oh, I, they go Alaska, Japan, Finland, England, Caribbean Sea. Time out. So is this? (laughs) <laughs> intersecting x uh, uh, like this is even like it's i want to know where it stands is this tunnels tunnels or is this like ley lines kind of vibes well they you know the skeptic on the show who's just paid to argue with them the i'm shill. pretty sure he doesn't give a shit You're gonna either way jesse's role on the show <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Big but science he, pays him here to debunk us. <laughs> right? He was saying that um, they are raised. They don't look like, you know, any kind of man-made or uh, normal type of ocean topography. And that it would be like part of the tunnel system to go mm. Through for them to travel, their plasma tunnels. And was that the area that the the other thing we found to do our research was? I think a self made documentary on Tubi, yeah. and the, he was he narrated it himself, and he was the only talking head, and it was all like uh, free use common like uh, what do you call it? Like the footage that you like don't creative have to pay commons, to use. yeah, yeah, creative commons footage. And he was talking about this area around Bermuda was one of, of course, the the uh, vortices like across the world, the vi- vital vortices or whatever. But sure. he said that uh, there's supple matter energy Ooh. there and i just like the idea that these lines that christy's talking about the x's are just supple energy oh, it's very, crossing it's and very sensual my favorite supple part of that energy. self-made Ooh. documentary was that he looked off camera the whole time he was speaking as if a producer was sitting there but he was very clearly yeah. just reading a teleprompter <laughs> all to himself because it would <laughs> occasionally he would repeat like the same exact line because there was a glitch oh my in god his thanks writing. for asking <laughs> <laughs> I got swindled because that was on Tubi for free. And then I was searching audiobooks on Audible and it was like, I thought it was an audiobook companion and it was 100% just the audio. So I was out $8.50. <laughs> 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 to, to just round out this like 4chan post, a couple of the questions that you kind of asked earlier, just some answers for those things. So when he, they talk about uh, how they come into the conclusion that the UAP are being released uh, are extraterrestrial, if they don't know what the UAP are to begin with, or if there is nothing inside of them, it's a pretty big jump to go right to extraterrestrial. To the guy uh, responds to that by saying, they crash sometimes, parts fail, and gravity engines near the surface of the planet can be like crossing an intersection. We recover these uh, and sometimes find passengers. We mostly see drones now. Back in the earlier days, we saw a lot more piloted craft. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he's saying that's how they know their ET is they did used to have bodies in them, but that was earlier in the uh, previous. And if it's true that like, Coming into a planet is, you know, dif- difficult for a gravity engine because the gravity changes pretty quickly. Maybe that's, yeah. I mean, who's to say the aliens are perfect when they create their technology? They could just be, we fuck up all the time. I'm yeah. sure that doesn't necessarily, does, fucking up doesn't necessarily stop when you become. Any, any technology is a compromise with the laws of physics. You know what I mean? Damn, like, it's wise. Yeah, it's a poetic way to say yeah, that. That was, Alex. Very Sorry poetic. we all shitted on you up, up top. <laughs> You're great. All right. Hey, I'm a, I'm a grower. I mean, no, you were right. right to do so. 
<laughs> uh, but that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point, though, because we just covered the Flatwoods monster recently, and that's some. There was yeah, like six that. UFOs that same night, kind of traveling and a certain distance apart that could that were piloted. But that was way back when, and now it would make sense that if you could preserve extraterrestrial life, you'd be like, "Well, I send anyone else out there. We send a drone." <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so what we're doing now, even in the modern world. We're like, "Why yeah. send pilots? Let's a drone kill it. Yeah, go for a room computer uh, iPhone." To shoot them. Why can't they plus up, right? But doesn't exactly. that lead this to be more modern day mythology than actually real? Like, uh, what, do you mean? what is the real? idea of like what we were just saying? Well, we don't want to use pilots anymore. We want to use drones, and so we just put that on the aliens or sure. the like aliens. Imputing values, yeah, yeah. Just like uh, in ancient Greece or ancient Rome, like gods had very human characteristics, even though they were gods, and so we have these aliens who. Like, they can travel light years, but we're like, they're just as dumb as us. So they definitely need. <laughs> Makes us feel you know? better. <laughs> and, we, and, and, it's, and when we talk about like the earth, there's some sort of rhythm and force. Like that's, that's just most of this is at the end of the day, D&D. Like we are just <laughs> adding D&D well, characteristics to things that we're like, yeah, yeah, that could be it. And I don't know if it's because it's a universal concept to have like the life force of the planet or these aliens. Look, I don't know if it's that, or it's really just us putting it on stuff. Honestly, sure. I don't care. It's hilarious either way. I absolutely <laughs> love it. But it's, I, I think a lot of the theories where humanity is like the center of it are made up. I do think that yeah. uh, the humanity being the focus of these aliens attention is silly. I think if anything, if this is happening, we're likely a tertiary, uh, like we're being watched or we're being just observed. Maybe one of millions maybe you just of have, different uh, imposter syndrome. Out there that they're just like we do <laughs> in a zoo. Yourself, like you're, you're, would, you're it, worth, you're worth being studied, Mike. Let me just say, yeah, thank you're you so worth much. it. I appreciate it. We that. covered that Larima, the last stop Larima, that really small town in Australia where there's only like 11 people and there's a billion people, 7 billion people in the world. And we are focused on a town of 11 people because it's weird and small and fascinating. So maybe we're just the Larima of the universe, yeah. but they're like, possible. Those earthlings are wild. Yeah. Yeah. Earth is like a How one act like, play. Primitive so creatures quaint. get technology and blow each other up they're all like, the time. They're like monkeys with no hair and they're putting pants on and hugging each other. How ridiculous. <laughs> What's wrong and then with as these soon things? as the, the alien dogs go live on the 23rd, it's oh, game yeah. over. They're going to reveal them. Yeah. Bring on I'm just going to chill out friend. with them. That's my plan. I'm just right, going right. to see if they want to hang out. I agree, out. Mike, that uh, it's arrogant to think that we're the focus. I think mm-hmm. we're just nothing to them. We're, it's, you know, I mean, how often do we consider like our relationship with an ant, you know, or right, they're just exactly. something on the ground that occasionally the we animals see in a zoo. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I also think there's something to be said that aliens are a very highly evolved us. So yeah. I, I went on a rant the other night after taking <laughs> an edible to Heather about how <laughs> I think it's like a normal weeknight. Just yeah, Christie's happens. back porch. I feel We're it. on the feel back that. porch screaming about aliens. It's in the zeitgeist. I feel it. I think every day we get more information that we're really living in a simulation and we're just like catching up to things that have already happened. So the fact that like we're like, oh, yeah, we should just send drones out. Well, that's something that like an advanced life form or an extraterrestrial has known for hundreds of thousands of years but we're just now catching up to it. So I feel like to your point, Jesse, like, well, are they, you know, are we, they as stupid as us? I think they're just like highly evolved and we're just kind of like slowly catching up. And if we could live long enough, we would evolve into what they are, but that's maybe in the next lifetime, we'll come back as one of them. (laughs) While we're here, can I pose this question? Because I love around around the room, air quotes, <laughs> vibes on this. Okay. We're in a simulation. Let's just say we're in a simulation. All right. Good or bad? Honestly, me, I would have sided with the robots in the Matrix movies. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pantoliano over here. Oh, yeah. I would have eaten that steak. They're giving you everything. Yeah, I would have. Because I feel like life in general, like, is, you know, what is existence? So I'll take the mm-hmm. robot version. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, does it matter even if we're in a matrix, right? Like, does it even matter? At the end of the day, you're still living a life. Yeah. 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 How will you live differently? What would you do? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think, um, I mean, your perception is your reality. So whatever matters to you in your life, if you're doing that, then that matters. But in the grand scheme of things, everybody dies. So yeah. does anything really matter? Our legacy that we leave If I turn out to be behind? a robot battery, fine. They'll be, they'll be using me for something. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're fueling worst. it. Yeah. At least I get yeah. nice dreams. Well, we should all live like we're in a simulation. Tim McGraw said live like you're dying, but live like you're in a simulation and you're a battery, <laughs> just a human goo battery. There's that, there's that theory that like if we ever truly figure out all the laws of physics in the universe, like we understand how the universe works, the universe would collapse because Bug. it's not supposed to be known. The idea of like if we, we know how know to it. manipulate reality in a scientific scientific level and you just reboot the aliens implanted that the simulation implanted that in your head so you won't figure it out so you'll I mean, stop maybe, looking no. i still want to know i just doesn't mean i don't want to know i'm just too stupid to figure it out on my own I'm trying to pull that, that last the idea, block out. the idea of like we're just catching up i mean one thing we've talked about so much on this podcast both minnesota main episode is just that the rapid developments alone in like quantum science the past mm-hmm. few years like being able to with our what was it they created they like a black hole mm-hmm. the size of an atom for a half a fraction of a second which means like they were able to pierce the fabric of space time on some level like we are humans are able to do that we are uh, you know with quantum the, the, the quantum yeah. discoveries of like is time real what's entanglement how does it work and and every time they try to test it to prove uh, disprove quantum science all they do is prove it to be real you know, we're we're just discovering, we're just discovering the ability to poke at reality just a little bit and be like, mm-hmm. what are you? And and we're like you said, at the very beginning of that, Christy. We're at the very, very start. I think so Heather once listened to a podcast about <laughs> quantum science and thought she understood everything and then immediately forgot it. And to this day, she's been trying to find this episode and she can't find I it. I can't find it. It was like it's so long hard. ago. It was on SoundCloud. Like that's how old this <laughs> oh, like wow. podcast was that I listened to. <laughs> it was probably like 2011. And I was like, no, but I understood it. I understood it completely. Quantum science is like know. you're in science class and then you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Like I get it. Yep. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh-huh. Man, uh. But you know, it's it's that uh, I love that cuz you you know, electrons are just on that basic level, there's the theory that cuz every electron is identical. They're spinning at the same rate. It's one guy. the exact same thing. That people there's a theory that like every electron is technically the same electron. It's like the flash. At yeah. all places, at all points in time because time isn't real or mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. fucked up. And that's when my brain melts and I go, I don't really know. Time, time is something that also makes my brain melt. It, it's, yeah. it's made up. It's just something we yeah. all made up as, as humans and come to collectively agree upon. But if you look at people that have had like, um, I don't, do they call them near death experiences? Don't, haven't they changed the terminology on yeah. that? Yeah. I was just reading about one the other day, but yeah, you're right. Yeah. I was too, actually. <laughs> this woman who went to like, who died for 24 mo- minutes and saw nothing. Yes. I read that on. Yes, on yeah, Reddit. Yeah, yeah. God, well, now I have another rabbit hole to go down. But everyone, <laughs> you know, all of people say that when they have come in contact with death, that their whole life flashes and it's just like that. Because time really is so short. Like our perception of life on Earth is like, oh, we use 80 to 90 years average. But in reality, it's just like a few seconds in the grand scheme of the universe of time. Because yeah, those doors are- in your brain open. That's what, I think it was American Scientific Magazine talk about. Like they did tests on people who are in cardiac arrest. And you see the function of the brain does flood open all of those memories. So your perception would be that you are in that moment feeling all of those things at that time in that order. And those doors stay closed in our brain so that just like every day walking around, we don't lose it. Because yeah. you would if everything that ever happened to you just came out. I'm good. You're like, oh, my God, that, that thing I fucked up in third grade. Yeah. Way back. Uh, but to, to that point and bringing that back to the quantum physics is I was looking at some unearthed CIA documents that was talking about the theory that the universe is between a white hole and a black hole and that all of time mm. is existing all at the same time. And by virtue of that, our perception is what we're just experiencing in the moment. I don't know. Maybe our brain, we evolved to perceive time linearly to survive better. That's the vibe. That's the, mm, I think that's the so truest. That's I think that's the truest explanation. Who fucking knows? Which just means we've been doing this infinitely forever, and I just don't want to do ages <laughs> one to 
like 20 again. I just don't I want to do those again, again in a second. Are you kidding me? I would do those again right now. I'll, I'll do zero to, I'll do zero to 12. And then if I could just black out from 13, zero to 12 is wasted years. That's garbage. years. <laughs> I know nothing. That's what I'm saying. Like it was just, it was just a chill time. I didn't care about nah, you were stupid. You were just running around pooping and, yourself and getting in trouble. <laughs> wasted time. As far as I'm concerned. Bro, pooping in a toilet is a social construct. Poop in your pants whenever you want. I just thought this is a no judgment zone. (laughs) I want to wake up shitting myself every day, 14 years old. Thank you to Hero Forge for sponsoring today's episode. And this might be one of my favorite like partnerships I've worked on with any uh, ad partner for Chiluminati, mostly because I've been using Hero Forge. For years, it's been one of my go-to tools for my tabletop RPG, like, hobby at home. I mean, I've been playing, you know, tabletop RPGs for, like, 20-something years. And one of the most fun things is trying to find, like, a mini that's closest to your particular character or whatever monster you're DMing uh, for the coming week. And that used to be a fun game of hunting around, but never really getting exactly what you want. But all of that is changed with Hero Forge. With Hero Forge, you can head over to that website and actually just, like, Fine-tune your model with hundreds of faces, bodies, positions, arms, races of different fantasy types, sci-fi, you name it, it's all there. And you can make your character exactly how you imagine them in your mind's eye. And that's kind of what I did for the past, uh, like, about five years now of multiple campaigns. That's how we always did it. And when I got my 3D printer, one of the coolest things is if you don't want to buy the model from them, but you have a 3D printer and you like their models, you can just buy the STL file from them for super cheap and you can print it out yourself at home. Now, granted, if you buy it from them, you're getting colored plastics and premium plastics and a whole suite of options to have the coolest, most enviable model at your table. But It's awesome that they let you have that option to print it out at home for people like me who just like 3D printing things because it's their new, like, special interest. So HeroForge.com is where you want to go. You can check out all the stuff that they do there. And, uh, you know, holiday gifts are still, you still got time. You can still do it. Go get one. If not for anybody that you know for yourself, because you know what? You deserve to be treated. Santa doesn't give you enough. And this is me telling you to go give yourself enough by going to HeroForge and getting yourself a mini for your TTRPG campaigns. Thank you so much to HeroForge for sponsoring us. We love you, and I love D&D. Okay, goodbye. Okay, go back to USOs. We're just talking about time I was about now. to say, wasn't the show about underwater <laughs> It's all aliens? connected. Yeah, it's yeah, all it's connected. All, it is. It is. Kind of all, kind I do feel like, like it's all connected. I do honestly feel well, like it's all connected. Because what if these aliens are Me not too, just one thing? Pooping. What if it's multiple things? Because there's the idea that these aliens, some of these beings are uh, transdimensional. In mm-hmm. that they're peeking through from a from a dimension mm-hmm. above sp- of time and space that when we leave they've been this able dimension, to either manipulate yeah. because of technology or they've exist beyond that because of other layers. Oof. I mean, it's possible because a lot of these, uh, if you look at abduction scenarios, yeah. they're they're all there's a common thread through a lot of them, but all of them have some weird personalization among them, like something they experience in that UFO abduction only makes sense to the person who's being abducted. And I always think about that one where the kid who was on the farm. And he got brought onto a spaceship With and he was like meat. in the early 1900s or late 1800s. And he saw like a creature just butchering meat of an indescript kind. Somebody working on a machine on his right of some bizarre, like things that make sense that like if you using were like a the peer of a yeah. farmer <laughs> yeah. who's like chopping meat for dinner and working on their farming tools kind of like makes sense a little bit. But even for him, it was like kind of bizarre. Uh, and then, you know, just like a lot of just unique things like that. Maybe that's because there's a psychical aspect or a mental aspect mm-hmm. or like a, uh, a consciousness aspect is a better word mm-hmm. for what I'm looking for to how some of these things interact with us. If they are, I just wish yeah. they would interact with me so I could talk <laughs> about out. it on the podcast. We told you what to do last it didn't time work. we talked to you. Didn't you tried? I tried. You, I did. I took. You bare assed it. I, I bare assed it front lawn, <laughs> quietly waiting from the hours of midnight to 5 a.m. Okay. Well, you need to call out. You need to be like, hey, ooh, hey oh, Give a little call. How you do it? Shake it a little. Shake yeah. it. Throw yeah. some Sade on. Oh, yeah. You got to. <laughs> Get nice and oily. Nice scented uh, oils. <laughs> oh, dude. Can nice I, if slow. I can learn to clap my cheeks, I can clap oh, in Morse code. I don't, I don't and like this. Signal them. She can clap the ruby slippers together. You clap them ruby cheeks together. And you're <laughs> going to go yeah. home on that spaceship. They're going I'm to on the wrong back podcast. to Kansas. Baby. Is, well, I might, truly. <laughs> you don't even truly, need to get abducted at that point. <laughs> no, you're just, you're just chilling. Yeah. I'm going to be abducted is the problem. This is not going to be by what I want. 
No, but to your point, Mike, when you're talking about that, there's some sort of personalization. We covered Sam the Sand- Sandown Clown, which was mm-hmm. in the UK. Yes. And it was these kids that saw this thing. And that was near a cliffside, near water. And their dad had seen and stuff. And an Air kind Force. Of, and, uh, yes. Not a base, yep. but it was, I think, was just an airport. Maybe it like was a base. Like an installation. Yeah. I think it was a military airport, but it's all kind of near there. But they saw it, and it's like their interpretation of like, oh, he was a clown. Mm-hmm. He had different colored faces. But when they draw it, you're like, well, that kind of looks more like a robot. But yes. it's when people are repeating back their experiences to you, it's always going to kind of come out in whatever. It's colored by their perspective. Mm-hmm. And the language that they have. A child yeah. doesn't have the same language as an adult to describe the types of things that they're seeing. Everyone was yeah, like, so just it's doing a their pedophile best. in the woods. And we're like, but what if it's really an alien? You will cover that story, yeah. boys. That, 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 that's, uh, that's a great story of like being lost in the woods. And this like weird robot creature is super nice to these kids. But it's like really mm-hmm. weird and like seemingly Coming trying to, to act human. And it's just very bizarre. It is weird. Speaking on like um, a weird microphone. And yeah, but yes. they heard it in their heads. Because like though. Everyone said, like, the telepathy Which, that most people... If it's an alien, yeah, happens. using telepathy, maybe it's appearing in a way that well, the kid's brain Translated. is trying to, like, interpret as something familiar. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all Jesse's understand the idea of the paradelia <laughs> effect, where the brain looks for patterns if there's no yes. pattern yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It could be something along those lines. Uh, yeah, and another uh, good example is the Rendlesham Forest incident, which is oh, also in the UK, one. but that was the yeah. UK military, and we have their audio recordings of that. They found something, like, flew low overhead landed in the forest nearby the military unit went out there to see what it was uh and we have them like talking and seeing and tracking the thing but they they all saw a craft but the two that went up and approached the craft saw something slightly different each they both saw a craft of familiar shape but one saw glowing and changing lights another one saw uh glowing lights that formed into different like symbols on the craft itself but the other person didn't see that whoa so it was just why are they seeing two different things they clearly saw something because other than the two of them their whole unit went out there and like tracked this thing something mm-hmm. did land out there it's just they don't know what it was and they've drawn they've drew like pictures of it they have like their official government filings that you can read but we don't know what it was and they don't know what it was and it was like a, un- a slightly unique experience between the two of them and no there's no real reason why that's what they uh, said on that history life. channel documentary too documentary <laughs> <laughs> I use that term very loosely, but that um, they have the crafts have the ability to kind of morph into and just disappear also. So it could, you know, sometimes it could, we could be not seeing something and it's up there, or maybe it morphs into like a regular aircraft or something. And so it's up there, but we just think it's, you know, one of our things, one of ours. Yeah. And- one of ours. And the, we've talked about this before in the podcast. It is the idea is like if you look back at UFOs over history, what they look like changes. Sometimes like in the early, early days, they saw weird like sky ships or bizarre looking hot air balloon things that were not quite hot air balloons, but they looked like it with weird spacemen that had weird space sp- suits that don't aren't described as grays, but are more described as like furry monkey creatures. Uh, mm-hmm. it's just, it, it, it shifts. And there's an argument there that Jesse has made many times that it's shifting because pop culture is shifting. And so mm-hmm, the stories yeah. change to fit us, um, what to fit to the enter, whatever entertainment idea is kind of floating out there. Uh, but it, it, yeah, it's trying. Well, I mean, cause in that aerial school do- uh, event, the kids there didn't have access to TV and mm-hmm. cartoons and comic books. And when they all ran out to that one spot and then ran back and the te- were like having a m- complete meltdown, the teacher's like, I don't know, just draw what you saw. I don't know how to help you. And then when they all drew similar, but different things. And then when they're interviewed by the psychologist, who's like, they got that same telepathic message. They were convincing people. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, and the, the, the telepathic message were similar, but different. You know, some of them were like, you know, technology is going to destroy us if we have unlimited you know if we just unfetteredly let it go you know nuts on the, the planet but the other ones were like you know we need to be kind to each other so it's like they kind of got images but their interpretation was different but there's something to be said for that of like manipulation of perception yeah i mean the Absolutely. kids also say from that that like when they saw the beings they kind of got like locked in on them like mm-hmm, it was hard for mm-hmm. them to break away just from looking at them and that mm-hmm. they like everything kind of like went silent except for what they saw. And some of the kids felt like a joy and a happiness. Others said they feel kind of scared if I remember correctly, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's weird, but they, they all saw something similar, but there was a unique thing. Each one kind of experienced mm-hmm. in their own way. Um, trying to loop it back to USOs. Uh, the idea of USOs, especially in the U S it actually goes all the way back to really 1947. It's kind of like the first USO that we have 
uh, documentation of. And it was a, the incident called the Maury Island incident in, Wa- in Washington. And uh, it's often overshadowed because around this time, Roswell also occurred. Mm-hmm. And two mm-hmm. years prior to Roswell, there was the potential Trinity uh, Trinity incident of the first U- UFO to crash on the after the first nuclear bomb test prior to, to uh, Roswell. But this incident, particularly the Maury Island incident, involved sightings of six donut-shaped objects in the sky near Maury Island, and debris from these objects allegedly fell into Puget Sound, suggesting a connection to potentially USOs. We'll cover that. We're going to go over that a little bit more detail. I'm going to go through a timeline of the most common USO sightings up to 2019. There's not that many. You got 1963, the USS Trepang out in the Arctic Ocean. The USS Trepang sub- submarine allegedly captured photographs of a USO in the Arctic Ocean. These images show a large, unidentified object emerging from and then submerging back into the ocean itself. In 1967, you have the Shag. Hold on. That's crazy, too, because the post, that same post uh, about the Bermuda uh, craft yeah, said the, the- that sometimes, rarely, if I'm remembering this correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, said that like rarely it would like retreat to the Arctic Circle. Mm. Like the same, yeah. It would move. Nobody can go down there, yeah. so it's nice and empty. That's a great place to hide. Randall said stuff's going on in the Arctic Circle too. I mean, we can't keep Antarctica. your eyes down. You gotta there. listen mm-hmm. to Randall. I was talking to Dean about this, our producer, a little earlier. In that, if you're gonna hide from us on the planet, you're gonna go to the ocean. Yeah, we can't. We can't yeah. go that deep. We just watched a submarine get popped. Yeah, we cannot yeah. go get that popped. deep. And we have. <laughs> Only a you can't couple. Get, you can't escape James Cameron, though. James Cameron. No, will you find can't you. escape. No, James. James Cameron. James Cameron and Victor Vescovo. If you have Don't not watched Operation you. Deep Ocean, Victor Vescovo is a Dallas. He's uh, from Dallas, but he built a submersible and then dove down to the deepest point in all five oceans for this Discovery Channel show. And then he sold the submarines to someone involved in the video game world. Gabe, someone. That's a Tommy. Gabe question. Newell. Our or maybe a Gabe Jesse Newell. question. Gabe there Newell. You go. A Gabe Jesse Newell. question. Yes, yep. I believe he bought the submarine. It's the Valve Man. <laughs> Yeah. He's, so anyways, but the the fact that he could even go down all the way as deep as he did, it's just he went to one specific spot. It is so overwhelming oh, yeah. how much more space there is and to see the topography and the way that they have to, I mean they're very precisely fighting currents to try to land exactly on the deepest spot so it'll count. They also sent probes down there with photos and even with the most technology that they had, this guy was like, you know, uh, made all his money, I think, in private equity and like, you know, he had backers and stuff to have this technology. Even with all of that, it was so hard. It was also kind of a bummer when he got down there and there's like a Coke can and you're like, just yeah. leave it in the yacht. Don't <laughs> yeah. throw it overboard and go somewhere. Yeah. And it's down here, but to or how much effort, time, time, and money? <laughs> Maybe that's, that's true. It is. But the the amount of effort, time, and money it takes just to get down there mm-hmm. for the brief amount of time he was down there, there is just so much expanse that we can't even look to. I mean, even you got radar and stuff and whatnot. But if they got the technology to, we can we have things that bounce radar off of us. You know, the U.S. military has the capability to avoid detection and radar and situations. So why wouldn't somebody that of course, uh, of course they do, of course they do somebody who could be underwater that mm-hmm. long. I mean, or morph into something that it's, you know, they just blend it. Yeah. Or they, I mean, yeah. Octopus. Many think that they are aliens, but if, that's true. I know too much. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I think there's, they're, they're pretty smart. They can open jars. <laughs> so <laughs> they can predict football they can matches. Do a lot of stuff. But if the, even the bases down there, if Victor Vescovo rounded a corner and there was one, it just camouflages itself and looks like, you know, the rest of the ocean down there. Big rock. Mm-hmm. A big, big ass rock. Whales. Took James yeah. Cameron, what, oh, like 10 years just to prepare to go down there for the first time. Oh, but then it took him 10 years to stop talking yes. about it too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He no still shit. has it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's so hard when he thinks about the ocean. <laughs> you know it. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. With HelloFresh, you're getting farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. No need to go to the grocery store. You can just count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable, which is why it's America's number one meal kit. And tis the season for giving and gathering. And with HelloFresh, it can also be the season of saving. Actually save money this month with fresh recipes delivered cheaper than takeout. And with pre-portioned ingredients, you'll never waste money on excess food. That's one of the the weirdest, most bizarre things I've I've realized with HelloFresh over the couple years I've been using them now, is that every single meal, I'm full at like the very last bite. 
There's maybe I'm just weird, but like it's just a perfect amount of food. I waste nothing. So instead of spending your time with all that stuff, spend your time this month shopping for gifts and sipping cocoa, not stuck in a checkout line in a grocery store. Sign up for HelloFresh and get everything you need to whip up a fresh, tasty meal delivered to your door. Just choose your recipes, select a delivery date, and relax knowing that dinner is on the way. HelloFresh has over 45 recipes and more than 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every week. So it's easier than ever to find something everyone will enjoy. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash chill free and use code chill free for free breakfast for life. The best meal of every day, by the way. One breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash chill free with code chill free. Thank you again to HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Then you have the 1967 Shag Harbor incident. Uh, that's in Nova Scotia, Canada. And while technically mm-hmm. in Canadian waters, this involved a large unknown object crashing into the waters of Shag Harbor. Witnesses in subsequent investigations could not conclusively identify what the object was, which had reportedly submerged into the water. And this is that this you can go back. There's actually like news clippings and stuff. Eleven people saw it. They heard what would sound like a large whistling noise. And when they looked up, they saw something that looked like it was on fire whistling down like a bomb and then it landed and crashed and they couldn't figure out they never could figure out what the hell it was. Jeez, that would be scary in that homemade documentary he mentioned the shag harbor incident and he also said that witnesses some witnesses saw what appeared to be a second craft follow the first Mm -hmm. into the water and there was conjecture that like maybe you know if you crash you come a recovery mission comes to help them out yeah yeah they they saw they claim to have saw uh, another another object floating about like 250 to 300 meters offshore where they think the first thing crashed in. Yeah, no, there's no, no idea what the fuck it was. Uh, then in 1970, the Baltic Sea Anomaly, discovered in 2011, but believed to have been there since around 1970, this odd structure on the seafloor sparked various theories, from a natural geological formation to, of course, ancient artifact or a crashed USO. How do they know? They didn't find it till 2011? Yeah, but they, yeah, I mean, imagine there's science reasons they they think it's from 20, uh, from 1970. I don't have the specifics on that. <laughs> yeah, okay. science reasons. Yeah. You, know, you know, for science, science reasons. reasons. Well, okay. I mean, right, they haven't, we haven't mapped the seafloor. Yep. We, when we covered Atlantis recently, we, we've learned about the seafloor 2020 mm-hmm. plan or 2030 plan where the whole idea is that they have to, ma- so I'm like, so it's not mapped yet. So <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't know. We don't know what's down there. Yeah, no uncharted idea. territory, <laughs> as they say. Uh-oh. I'm getting into deja vu territory here, but I there was this news story that we did on the show one time where it was like we just found out like all the sharks go to like one hole at one point in the in the year. And you're they're like, like what? what? And they're like, yeah, there's a shark a time, hole. There's like a time where like all the sharks need to go have babies, and they all just like go to this like deep shark yes. sex cave. I've heard of that the orgy pit. I think they call it. Yeah, and they and they just we didn't know about shark shag cave. Yeah, we <laughs> didn't know that existed, and the idea that it exists is crazy. And that, Are like, you just all referencing the, sharks- the plot of Meg 2? I no. Was, Jesse, <laughs> we I was about see that. to talk about Meg 2 because no. that is the plot. There is, the if plot. we went to the Mariana Trench, so perhaps good. the ocean floor is a facade. And if you just propel hard enough down, you're going to hit the under. The the real ocean and that's where all the shit is. That's what makes me sad. It makes me Meg too makes me worried that Victor Vescovo is part of a greater conspiracy because he was down there and he did not go further. He just stopped right. Maybe at the he floor. didn't. He didn't. He didn't try. Though. He didn't want to. He, may, yeah, he, he looked knew. in. They told him. Saw an eye. Look back. Was like, nah, dude. And just He's turned like, around. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like talking about megalodons. I was victimized by the Discovery Channel and their megalodon I you were say, Oh my god. I by a embarrassed myself at work and in law school class. So that was cool and fun. Thanks a lot. Discovery Channel. You oh, oh man. <laughs> Heather thought that, that it had been rediscovered. In the, I thought it was real. She talked about it at a work event and then she just got annihilated. That. That was not real. That's like I talked, the mermaid I told my show. Yeah, the merm, just like the mermaid one. <laughs> it was before the mermaid show, but I told my boss who told other people. And then I went and I told my friend who said, no, honey, that was fake. <laughs> so I had to come back to work and be like, do you remember how I accidentally caused you to embarrass yourself <laughs> and make amends? So it's not, your, it's not your fault channel. though. Jason Statham killed that thing. And that's why it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's what it was. So Jason keeps us. I believe it. Right. Of all, I believe that. Of all the theories we've said that's here today, that's the one I believe. <laughs> you think Jason Satan is secretly like a, no- a Nordic alien sent down to protect no, him? No, I just think he's a normal, an innocent man. A normal, innocent man. We're just normal men. <laughs> he's just a man. We're just innocent men. Ever seen Crank? He's definitely here. 
1980, <laughs> the Falkland Islands incident in the South Atlantic reports emerge of a large underwater object pursued by the British Navy, uh, which led to speculation about a USO. But details of this incident remain shrouded in secrecy and are often debated. Then the most famous one that kind of really jump started a lot of the modern UFO uh, belief was in 2004, the USS Nimitz encounter in the Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. While primarily known for its aerial UFO encounter, there were also reports of an underwater object moving at high speed as detected by sonar, suggesting a possible USO connection. We're going to talk a little bit more detail about that one in a minute. We're just going to get through the last three. Then there was 06, the O'Hare International Airport incident in Chicago. Following the sighting of a UFO at the airport, there were, con- there were unconfirmed reports of related underwater disturbances in Lake Michigan, hinting at USO activity. 2010. That's a deep yep, lake. Baltic yeah. Sea object in the Baltic Sea. Uh, a strange circular object was discovered on the Baltic Sea floor by a Swedish diving team. Its origins and purpose remain unknown, leading to, a, as always, speculation about it being maybe a, a USO. And then 2019, the USS Omaha encounter in the Pacific Ocean. This was the footage that leaked in 2021 that showed a spherical object hovering over the ocean, then submerging, observed by USS Omaha. This incident is one of the most recent and well-documented ones uh, cases. That's one we've, we've shown on the show multiple times. So the heat signature, like two miles out. So you can't really tell what the thing's shape is, but it's circular because the, the way that the lens captures the heat that mile out, it just kind of flares out. And that it was hovering, it went back, forth, up, down. And then eventually at the end, it was just like, bloop, it went underwater. And you can hear the... the left, right, left, right, A, B, start. Is that yep. how it goes? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Nice. I think you just got some clout with Jesse. For that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> that was pretty cool. My Nintendo Power Magazine taught me a thing or two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your magazine? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to get Nintendo Power Magazine. You didn't get oh, that? Oh, no. Come on now. I had to learn how to beat Star Tropics somehow <laughs> to yeah. get the info out of the Nintendo to magazine. Power. To tell you. I am impressed. I'm about to be like, tell me about <laughs> aliens because I believe whatever you want to say. <laughs> Are you a star? Are you a fellow Star Tropics fan? I'm, yeah, <laughs> on NES. Right, come on now. Oh, I've got that. I've got. Oh, hang on. I got to. Like, Dean can edit the silence out. I'll be right back. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> You're making me excited. Is he actually? What is this man doing? He got the host got up and left. Uh, if he has Star Tropics merch, I am going to lose it. <laughs> yeah, right. The host of the show is gone. <laughs> I bet she's going to get the letter that you dip in water. I think he's looking for his copy of Star Tropics. I yeah. think that's what he's doing yeah. right now. He's got a copy of it. Let me see. I very rarely get to show shit off, but Star Tropics. In- oh, oh, look at this. Oh. Let's go. I used to go to the old little uh, movie store in our town and you had to pull the yes. card off that was like a library card yes. typewritten on a typewriter that was laminated and take it to the front and yep. be like, I want Star Tropics. <laughs> this, is, this game is like, I didn't know it existed until later in my life and it's actually fucking great. I love this game. I've never played it. We were a Sega family, so I, we Me didn't too, have Nintendos. <laughs> oh, Dean. I got a yeah. thumbs up from Dean, so I'm not that nice. only <laughs> yeah, You got the British guy. Yeah, yeah. Dean you got only the played guy. Night Trap. Don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> These UFOs are moving in kind of strange ways. Yeah, ways. I feel like they're trying to size us up. If you're going back and forth, mm. that's like uh, that. That to me tells me that you're trying to uh, map an area or surveillance. Are you familiar with Jacques Vallée? The explorer, yeah, the author, the author, the scientist, uh, the uh, I forget what he's like specifically as a peach. A I feel like he comes up with like Ivan Sanderson and a lot of this stuff, like in those type of lists. Of he's people. like one of the main go to guys, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His, he's his, uh, his deal. One of the big ufology people, like yeah. in our time, he's written a lot of he's books. He's the one in he's the one in the movie, right? Yes, yep. He was the yeah, one that was in, in the uh, movie. He, uh, he's been close encounters. He went and visited the aerial uh, school yes. kids as well. He was out yeah, there for a while. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his big thing is is he talks about how a lo- lot of the way these things move and inter- interact with us, whether they're from you know interacting with people in uh, in planes or uh, with people on the ground, a lot of it is almost playful uh, in the way that he, we can kind of perceive it. It almost is, is in a way it, it keeps itself mysterious. It moves in ways that make no sense um, and then zip off without any like explanation. It's almost like they're kind of instead of like sizing us, almost like taunting us, like. Almost mm. like pushing us to to think about what the fuck is even happening. Maybe like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I'm not no, touching you. Way, I'm not touching you. A lot of what they do makes no sense. Like, why are they doing? Why do they just hover over random people sometimes and move in like weird patterns and then fly off? Why do we get what some that just like get really bright and like beam a light down on some people and then zip off? Well, you know like, how a sign says, "Don't touch the glass on the lion cage," and then some toddlers like, "Bam!" 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think this is like we have the similar sign and we got like weird alien juveniles just poking on the glass anyway, just seeing what, riling up the monkeys out for a joyride in their in yeah. their craft? Well, it doesn't make sense to us, but perhaps it makes sense to them. Well, yeah, exactly. They're doing. Who knows what they're trying to actually do? Like uh, the arrival. Looking back at the Maury, uh, Maury Island incident in 1947, uh, initially it was Harold Dahl, his son, and their dog who were out on a salvage boat near Maury Island when they claimed to have seen those six donut-shaped objects in the sky. The objects were described as being made of, of like a reflective metallic substance with one appearing to be in some sort of distress. And uh, following that, Dahl reported that the troubled object ejected a substance which fell to the water and the beach, and this debris reportedly killed his dog and his injured son. Now, if this sounds familiar to Alex and Jesse, it's because we actually talked about this incident Way a long this. time ago, yeah, like early, early on. Where, like, remember, they got four, dumped three, the stuff four years ago. Yeah. Killed his dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dahl collected samples of the debris, which were later described as white, lightweight material. And there were Dahl also claimed to have taken photographs of the objects, which were later allegedly confiscated from him. So he doesn't have, of course. Mm-hmm. So the ETs killed one of their own. They killed a dog. They That's literally so killed. Oh, maybe they started a war with the dog aliens. Oh, shit. On our planet, fuck. and they're ready to retaliate. <laughs> oh fuck! What if it was like a Romeo and Juliet situation, and like that was like the end, and like now they've learned? We have to interpret it. We're left to pick up the pieces. Yeah, literally. As always. Uh, there was an Air Force investigation. Two Air Force intelligence officers, Captain William L. Davidson and Lieutenant Frank M. Brown, were dispatched to investigate. Uh, they collected some of the debris samples, and on their return flight, uh, the officer's plane crashed, and both men were killed. The Air Their Force later crash. reported that the wreckage of the plane did not contain any unusual debris. Uh, hmm. Very bizarre. Interesting. The government killed them. Yeah, to yeah keep that them was quiet. it. They fucking blew them out of the sky. Uh, there's hoax claims that people say that Maury uh, Island incident was later claimed to be a hoax by Fred Chrisman and Harold Dahl. Dahl stated that he had fabricated the sighting on orders from his supervisor, Fred Chrisman. The FBI involvement uh, was uh, did happen. The FBI investigating concluded the incident was a hoax. They noted inconsistencies in Dahl's and Chrisman's account. And of course, the media coverage, the, and despite the FBI's conclusion, the incident received significant attention in the media and among UFO enthusiasts. So the problem here is you can't you can't trust anything any of these government anybody exactly. says. First of all, they're going to lie to Damn you. Right. This is when I become you can't uncle and I start to tell you Damn right. about how the government's always lying to you. you. When we said that the government blew that plane up, Jesse, you shook your head, my dude. You got to watch Spy Ops on Netflix. They oh, do man. like the government blows up airplanes of time. people who we are just humans Russia on do it Earth to their own people. Like no, they blew the. The predecessor to Manuel Noriega, his like plane oopsied. It's like, no, the CIA blew it out of the sky. And so, and the, I just read in a book from the library that's like the CIA and the mighty Wurlitzer about how the CIA purposefully manipulated the per- public perception of socialism by infiltrating these like individual groups in countries all over the world. So, and it's, it's proven, you know, so if there was something strange, unexplained, or anything like that, and the government caught wind of it, it's like you were saying, Mike, at the top of the show, certainly there's going to be as much obfuscation as there can be of like, how do we confuse the people mm-hmm. so that they don't really hey y'all look over yeah. here but look over here but look over here well who knows what to believe i don't it's know the, I also, the paradox people bring, I listen to y'all's jfk episode you know what i'm talking about <laughs> <The paradox laughs> that's brought up a lot is like yeah. how can the government be hiding it secretly on but also be like inept at hiding it and i think the answer is they're not hiding it and that's why they're obfuscating it like it leaks over and over and over and over again so what are you going to do as a government party are you going to let the leaks just happen and then pretend nothing's happening Read the no you're going to jump Roswell. in and yeah. muddy the waters as much as you can mm-hmm. so that you don't know what's fact and what's not because that's the mm-hmm. only other option you have as things leak out to the public they'd love to frame people yeah, just, we covered MK Ultra Jesse for four episodes for like eight <laughs> fucking hours I don't know why you're all coming to me I agree the I CIA does stuff head. I watched you shake thank your you head. I figured Y'all you did like, but you Jesse you're head. stupid the CIA it go- kills Dude, people I'm like yeah they, no turn on you, they turn on you quick on the show why do you love the CIA so much Jesse are you a plant are you one of them you're Let CIA me see your ID. Just Jesse. are you taking our money and giving it to the government the four of them were never seen again <laughs> <laughs> it was the last episode uh, th- yeah no absolutely but I think Mathis is right on the point that there's a weird disconnect. It's the same thing when you see people interview, and I know we're going to get messages, but I just don't care. When you see people <laughs> interview, like, uh, people at Trump rallies, mm. and they'll say, mm-hmm. he's in charge of the government still, 
but also all the wrong things with the government are not his fault. It's actually Joe Biden. It's like, okay, time out. What? And it's the same thing here where it's like aliens are running the show, but also they're not running the show, but also (laughs) the government is hiding that they're not running the show, but also the government doesn't know. And it's so the muddied water is the whole damn thing. It is. It's all muddied. It, it, and the, it sounds like the CIA is damn, working they got me. double time. But, it, but also, yeah. I believe, truly, is that a lot of it is UFO guy A said something, UFO guy B said something, UFO sure. guy C said something. None of them match up. So you have got, UFO guy D is like, here's my universal theory for why it all actually makes sense. So we can all have credit for it. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's a major problem, too, because, yeah. again, no matter what we're all doing, it is a business. UFOs oh, are business. Well, and it's, You'll never hear an argument. And it's an industry where it's hard to be legitimized. Like you can't say like, well, I have a PhD in UFOlogy. Someday we'll have that. <laughs> but but, you're, but so it is hard to, to know who to right? believe just because they've been in the industry so long. That might not be a good thing. And Their brain is d- just yeah. also this weird like purity test that the general public has in that in order to study this, you do need money. You do need funding. And, but th- just because you get funding doesn't automatically make you uh, not trustworthy. I will say, for instance, uh, Avi Loeb, the guy who the scientist who got funding to go out of the ocean to scrape for a meteorite, like, you know, doing that stuff. Dude got shat all over because he got funded for it to get it done. But you need money to go do it. And then the other side of the coin, you have someone like Jeremy Corbell, who his whole entire uh, existence is uh, completely just based on the entertainment factor of UFOs and making money off of his you know, podcast and, you know, to the stars Academy, which he kind of helped with Tom DeLong with, uh, and his current podcast with, uh, George Knapp called weaponized, you know, there's, there's that entertainment factor. And it's hard to take a lot of what he says seriously, because he hypes up everything as the next big revelation because he wants people to watch his shows. And there are times where he drops things that are very valuable. Those leaked government videos were a direct result because of his efforts to get them out to the public. But then there's also the other side of that where he'll have an episode talk about this amazing photograph. And when you look at the photograph, it just looks like flares. And then you learn the details of where the photo is, which is next to an Air Force base that does constant practicing. And it just makes sense to be flares. But because it's all about that entertainment for him and getting that clicks, yeah. you get, you, that also muddies the waters about who can really be trusted, what's real, mm-hmm. and having to do all that other research, which not a lot of people don't want to do. They want to see a Reddit post with a headline that tells them what's going on and then move on as opposed to the dirty reality of like the Schumer amendment and what crush is going through and all this other stuff that makes it more difficult. If you don't do the reading yourself, it's a lot to sift through. It discredits the, the real stuff too. Yeah. You know, if everything's lumped into one category, then people that don't believe they're like, well, everybody's wacky that and it's like, well, if we only reported on this stuff, that's credible and left all this clickbait stuff out, then mm. I think it would be more widely accepted. Yeah. But who's the editor, right? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, it's like that History Channel thing we were watching is there would be a part where they would have someone going, no, I saw a glowing thing under my ship. I'm a thousand percent sure of it. And then they go, well, there is so much bioluminescence mm-hmm. in that area. Where And so luckily, I mean, they eventually discredited in that show. But if you're only watching a clip of it yeah. or you're only hearing a certain part of that, then you're like, oh, I, I've been told that this is real. Oh, it turns out it was debunked. I can't really trust anything. It's all just a bunch of, like you said, the waters are so muddy. And especially mm-hmm. on something like TikTok too, right? Where like this shit just takes yeah, off. God. We did a whole episode on the lands beyond the ice walls surrounding Earth. And like there was, the reason <laughs> I even did that topic shit. is because for whatever reason, it was like huge on TikTok. Like people were like, couldn't believe that all this stuff was like hidden away. So I did like a deep dive on this thing and did a whole episode, you know, and it's like it takes about five minutes to find out like it's all not only made up, it's but it's just like, D&D. We got to stop he, making yeah, D&D yeah. real. It sounds like Game of Thrones. They're like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> George R. R. Martin wrote this. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Absolutely. And then stopped. Uh, but no, that's a good point. Because on TikTok, you see like uh, when the and Jesse, if you you said you were at the Game Awards, is that in L.A. where they had that big thing in the sky where it was like that big digital projection in the sky where it looked like a person's head coming out of it? That was on TikTok recently. And it was at some Game Awards. And I think it was in Los Angeles or Las Vegas. But the capabilities now to be able to project mm-hmm. these things. But people on TikTok are like, Project Bluebeam's oh, going yeah. live. And you're like, that's an advertisement. <laughs> it's not a real tiger in the sky. And, and Project Bluebeam, again, is one of those things where if you take five minutes and do the research, you can literally find where yeah. that mm-hmm. rumor 
or originated. We covered it and we're like, oh, like a guy yeah. typed all this and just That's printed all it, it is. out. <laughs> the biggest problem right now, as, as far as I see it, is COVID messed people up. Like that's yes. three years mm. where a lot of young people, uh, especially in the USA, but I imagine it's worldwide, schooling kind of went by the wayside. And you can see the stats. Like right now, every, people that should be at like a 10th grade level or at a fourth grade mm-hmm. level, it's bad. It's a bummer, and dude. I it's think a bummer. Literacy is, is bad. plummeted. Yeah, just and just crushing. basic cultural knowledge and being able to, to like determine what's real and what's literacy, fake. Media and literacy. It's just like media literacy. Liter- Literacy? Yeah, that's the word. You, know, you got it. Terrible right now. And a lot of it yeah. then translates into TikTok where if someone with authority says something, people believe it in ways that are insane to me. There's one that I'm obsessed with. There's this woman on TikTok who makes videos that are just like, the Roman Empire never existed. Here's my evidence why it didn't. And she'll be like, this is a Greek coin, not a Roman coin. And and there'll be reaction videos. We're like, that is clearly a Rome, like what are you talking about? And and she'll make like <laughs> yeah. hundreds of videos and show all these views because people are like, "Damn, I didn't know that." It's like, yeah. what do you mean you didn't? Know? Yeah, and you're like, "Don't know that. <laughs> you don't put that, that in your brain. It's, it's fake true. stuff. You yeah. birthed it yourself. It's fake information. If you just sound like you know what you're talking about, there's a group of people that just believe it because it's like I saw it and this guy he looks like he's like 50 years old, so he probably knows what's up. And it's just <laughs> what you're like. No, he's just been crazier longer. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. know no, what he's sn- no sniff test of any kind. Do, yeah, do they, and that's do they a problem it? I yeah. think right no. now because you're absolutely correct. There's people see a thing in the sky and they're like, that must be X. When it's like, no, yeah. there's about yeah. 12 explanations of what that actually is. But people want to believe so bad. Like, mm-hmm. and I also think this goes back to the idea that during crappy times. People always want to believe in something else that will yeah. even, I mean, magical religion at its height was in the middle ages. Cause people were like, I'm a surf. My life is yeah. shit. But if I get mm-hmm. to go to heaven, hell yeah, it's all good for me, baby. You're just shoveling shit going, maybe it'll be better someday when I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the gravy in heaven. And I think every like several hundred years, there's a different version of that. And and yeah. it, this isn't like a poo-poo of religion. It's just a poo-poo of like humans really need shit to hold on to. Mm-hmm. And yeah. sometimes it's like the space people will come and save us <laughs> exactly. from all this BS. Like I can't afford rent, but a space person can change <laughs> for me. You know, like they're waiting under the waves to save me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trust me, aliens are coming to save you. They're not. It's not happening. If anything, they're going to come in like ruin everything. We got a Carl right? Sagan or this thing the save dog. ourselves. Unless but. they're doggy best friends. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that, Mike? You think that that they are vicious? Because I think uh, if they wanted to have done something to us, they already would have. What if they yeah, already did, I don't think- man? I don't but think my chihuahua yeah. bites me like three, four times a week. I, you so know, I don't think they're vicious in the idea. I don't think they're vicious in the idea that they're here to conquer us. Cause like you said, it probably could have by now if that's what they were looking, if they were real and that's what they're looking to do. But I do think there might be a, a general disregard for individual people in mm-hmm. whether they are safe or not and who not giving too much of a shit about them. Um, especially if you believe any abduction of this, uh, any abduction scenarios, Betty and Barney Hill one's always like a fascinating one. Quick question though. If what does that separate them from humans? Because we don't really seem like we value human life very much. I mean, true. As far as how we've treated questions. everyone ever, so, forever. I mean, and it's still are treating true. people, frankly. Very. I mean, I agree. I think like the, I said, the, they're just highly evolved versions of ourselves. Oh. <laughs> Sad to know that that part does not get evolved yeah, out no of shit. us though. I, I do think, if they did come forward, there'd probably be a section of humanity who would like lose their minds. And I think yeah. there would oh, be yeah. chaos amongst certain groups of, of like cultural beliefs or religious beliefs that would probably be not pretty for a while, depending on like how or what, if it ever happens. It's just, it's hard to know. It's hard to know. It's also fascinating to me because I think you're correct that there'd be some sort of chaos, but also at the same point, I'm fascinated by the fact that if you look at the Catholic church, for example, they fund a lot of science stuff under the idea mm-hmm. that like, you know, God well. probably created those microbes and those like, mm-hmm. and so you would have to imagine that you could easily just say, okay, aliens. Yeah. God probably created them too. Like it, it's not a logical God leap be to be like, that, that's how I feel too. Is like, if you, you re, re, we come to the realization that not just alien life, but sentient alien life exists and they're here and they're millions of years ahead of us. 
Why can't you go, oh, well, God created the universe, so he must have created yeah. every living thing out there. I mean, read that at the risk of sounding like a Texan. Read the Bible, all right? <laughs> if you read the description of an angel in the Bible, is not the long-haired, Mm-mm. trumpet-playing, beautiful thing you put on the Christmas tree. It is a fucked up, multi-eyed yeah. thing, riding on a flame yeah. and whatnot. It's a UFO story, yeah, all like right? It's so, a cluster of eyeballs spinning in nuts. place. Like, when, uh, we were in, <laughs> when we were in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina recently, I got somebody took an angel beanie baby and put eyeballs all over it and it looks <laughs> like awesome. Thai beanie babies made it that way but it's a biblically accurate I angel it. and it's I was like this is fucked up I want this <laughs> but it, it's a, it serves as a reminder on my mantle under my God might be aliens print that uh, <laughs> Alistair made because it those stories are not new stories mm-hmm. of like seeing weird fucked up shit in the sky goes way back yeah, goes yeah. Back oh, as yeah. far as we can actually like it, and if, so far back perhaps they're all the same thing just yeah Depending on your culture or where you're from, you have different language to describe it. Mm-hmm. Which is what they said in the aerial UFO incident. Mm-hmm. Thank you to Aura Frames for sponsoring today's video. And you know what a really fun gift you could get your mom this year for Christmas is? You know, instead of another gift card she won't use, a digital picture frame with from Aura Frames. It's really the gift that keeps on giving because you can always keep her up to date with your new pictures. That's my favorite thing about having Aura Frames. I don't have to worry about uploading pictures and then if I want more to unplug the frame and bring it to, I don't have to do any of that. Aura Frames comes with an app where I can just open it and any pictures I've taken or imported or whatever, I can just click and upload to the frame and it's there, it's on the frame. And the frame has so many different ways to display pictures, whether you want them timed for a certain amount of time before they move on to the next, if you want a fancy transition, if you just want them to blink over to the next one. And one of my favorite things is at night when the lights go down, the the frame doesn't stay on and like light up the whole room because it's a screen. After the lights all go off, the frame automatically turns itself off with the lights. It's just, it's such a nice thing. I don't know why I never thought I would love a digital frame as much as I love my aura frame. And now I have two of them. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll get three. I could see one maybe in my office as well. It's uh, it's just a nice app. I don't know. I, I, I like having one. The cool thing, too, is it comes with unlimited storage and simple controls on the frame. So you can like upload as many photos as you want and mom can pick your favorite ones. See why it was named the number one digital frame by Wirecutter, The Strategist, and Wired. There's a reason for it. Give the gift this holiday season by visiting AuraFrames.com today and get $30 off their best-selling frames with the code CHILL. These frames sell out quickly, though, so get yours before they're gone. That's AURAframes.com with promo code CHILL. Terms and conditions apply. Kind of speaking about, like, USOs that we have actually evidence of, the next one I want to talk a little bit more detail of is the Nimitz encounter from 2004. This is the one, the very first videos that were kind of leaked in 2017 by Jeremy Corbel. This kind of sprung him onto the scene in a much bigger way. Uh, and this is the one where the USS Nimitz encounter refers to the series of radar visual encounters with an unidentified flying object by U.S. Navy uh, fighter pilots in November of 2004. The incident gained significant attention due to the credibility of the witnesses and the release of the F, uh, the FLIR forward-looking infrared video footage by the Department of Defense. The breakdown is pretty straightforward. It was off the coast of San Diego, California. The USS Princeton, part of the Nimitz carrier strike group, had been detected, uh, un- detecting unknown aerial contacts for several days before the encounter. These objects appeared suddenly at high altitudes, descended rapidly, and then hovered at about 20,000 feet. The encounter was FA-18F pilots, two of them, Super Hornet fighter jets from the USS Nimitz, were directed to intercept these objects. The pilots were Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate. Uh, The video description, the visual description Fravor gave described it seeing a tic-tac-shaped object approximately 40 feet long with no wings, rotors, windows, or discernible propulsion system. It seemed to hover over the ocean, causing the water to churn beneath it. The maneuverability of the thing, uh, the object demonstrated extraordinary capabilities, including rapid acceleration, high speed, and the ability to hover and change directions abruptly and instantly. The FLIR video is a recording of a second pair of jets that arrived later, captured the now famous FLIR video showing the object accelerating away at high speeds. And this footage, along with two other videos of similar encounters, they were both official. They were all officially released by the Pentagon in 2020, confirming the authenticity of the videos when they leaked. The investigations that followed the event was investigated by multiple parties, including the uh, including ATIP, which is now completely shut down, which was a secretive Pentagon program that studied UFOs. And the release of the footage and subsequent media coverage sparked renewed public and governmental interest 
in these unidentified aerial phenomena. And it's around this time in 2020 as well that UFO gets re-termed entirely. It's UAPs now. Government will not refer. You got to rebrand. Well, because they did too, a great it's job. It's too ugly. At, it's too sticky now. We yeah. talked about a bunch, but they, the government did a great job at poisoning the the term UFO from the 40s all the way until they needed to change it to UAP because it became silly. It became something mm-hmm. that people just thought of silly green men and, and people making up stories. And so now they're UAPs, and we don't call them extraterrestrials anymore. The government calls them NHI, non human intelligences. That's in mm. the Schumer Amendment. Uh, it's in a few of Grush's official filings. Like the government now refers to them as NHI instead of extraterrestrials. And of that course. led to a lot of speculation of people going. It's worse. It's scary. Well, yeah, because scarier. that leads to speculation of maybe they're not from space. Maybe they're from here or maybe they're from some other. Like, <gasps> time you know, travelers. No. Yeah, time travel. We've been sharing. What if we've been sharing half the planet? Not even half because we're only 25% of the planet. The other 75% is water. We have been sharing the planet with non-human whatnot underneath the, under the sea just like sebastian said <laughs> dolphins octopus have you yep. seen some of the if you get down to the some of those like wild amazing animals of the deep ocean some of the shit down there i don't it could be intelligent and be able to talk 100%. To i don't know so yeah this nimitz event which we talked about on our show the the idea of it going from the sky and being able to dip down into the water and like you said it is not just one fleet of u.s military personnel but then radioing and another one going yeah we've yeah, been looking at those yeah. for about two yeah. weeks and you're like what it's call it's me, man. A random thing. It was you gotta call me weeks of pings before they finally were like all right go check those things out and fravor even <laughs> talks like, yeah, about we've been seeing how that you could see in the water underneath it just like this huge potential like cross-shaped vehicle thing that sunk down when the uap went down into the water and like redocked with it or rejoined it it's like we've been spotted sink 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 and it sinks down there it, it, it mimicked his movements for a while it seemed to like completely re- go for a head-on collision before it like just dipped out and then it disappeared and again we have the video of the FLIR of it of the uh the video and then the radar pings and the two weeks of pinging something off of the uh, off the ship for it's just wild like the details mm-hmm. are insane and the very last one we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail is the uss omaha encounter which happened in 2019 which uh, involved the U.S. Navy ship and an unidentified flying object, which later became public in 2021. This incident is notable for its high-quality video footage and the involvement of a U.S. Navy vessel. Uh, this happened on July 15th, 2019, off the coast of San Diego, California. A littoral combat ship of the United States Navy, the USS Omaha, was involved in the encounter. The crew of the USS Omaha observed and recorded a spherical object flying in the vicinity of the ship. The object was observed hovering over the ocean before it started to descend and eventually disappeared into the water. Its speed, altitude, and heat signature were reportedly anomalous with no signs of propulsion, which we saw on that video that leaked. The thermal image footing, uh, the thermal imaging footage, uh, the UFO was captured on the ship's thermal imaging systems, and this footage showed the object moving smoothly back and forth and then rapidly before submerging into the ocean where you can hear the people saying, we have splashdown, we have splashdown. And then mm-hmm. we have uh, – this was all leaked, and then the footage was leaked The footage was leaked to the public in 2021, and then the authenticity of the video was then confirmed by the Pentagon after the leak. The invest- huh. Don't you love it? The Pentagon's like, yeah. It's yeah I don't it's know. A- we don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> well, they you waited, figured it out. You got they us. waited how long to clarify that those initial v- videos from 2017 – were actually confirmed real in 2020, like three years later, well mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. the fire and publicity around them had long died down. So long. But it would be the Navy that would yep. know this. That's what that guy in that made up documentary <laughs> said. He's like, it's not the CIA or the FBI. He was like, it's the Navy because they're the ones out there, literally, like on the front lines seeing it. But also, I mean, you're, they've charted it in their logs where it's like, ah, oh, we saw something weird. They were the we most compelling guys at the hearings, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. every time. They're not going to risk their whole military career to like for clout. Right. <laughs> like you're good. You're a military hero. You're fine. I'm waiting. Yeah. We all signed because Jesse, <laughs> Jesse's thinking about how to word something. Well, I mean, they. <laughs> do you want to besmirch? The, I do want to besmirch. I do want to yeah, yeah, yeah. um, wow. uh, <laughs> At the risk of sounding like a Texan. Hey, we support the troops. Right? <laughs> Our boys in blue out there. They're fighting. The NIH is out there <laughs> making us sound uh, like NHIs. we're very conservative. I and it's not at all. <laughs> be further <laughs> from the truth. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You're going to turn on the show and be like, oh my. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get a lot of MAGA people. They're like, I thought these two women were white. Had white. sounded all these. right. Nope. <laughs> very, very progressive. I'm trying to remember. Um, what the as much as i want to be like are good boys in the military a lot of stuff gets <laughs> leaked i'm trying to remember what the thing was that got leaked on discord and like and they, yeah. that dude heroes. definitely did it for clout 
Like he was in a Discord with a bunch of like 14 year olds and he was like, guys, look at this top <laughs> secret information I have. <laughs> Man got arrested because he was trying to show off to teenagers. So I definitely feel like it's it was like maps and documents and shit. Yeah, my mama always says consider the source. So if it's like a twenty-one year old, he doesn't have a lot to lose. If you're a naval commander of a fleet of seventy five hundred, that's a lot different. But yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that guy was like, hey, you guys want to see something cool? You're like, don't show this to your buddies. It's national secret. (laughs) Don't show it to your buddies. Your your the people you talk your fourteen year old buddies on Discord. (laughs) I have to believe that there's like I don't know. If enough people saw stuff, we would have more credible things. But I think no matter what I say, the counter from Mike would always be that every time they do say they've seen stuff, the government <laughs> shuts it down immediately. So how do you tell the difference? Yeah. yeah. So it's really yeah. a non-argument, really. The CIA yeah. machine. We have a lot of like and the, the issue of like, well, why don't they have it on camera? Well, we do have a lot of people who catch it on camera, but phone cameras, unless you have a telephoto lens to go along with you it. You can't film the sky with a phone. No, just you like, can film a plane with a phone. You're going to get a yeah. blurry, tiny object that's hard Try to, it. to tell yeah. what it is. Try unless it. you use one of those old Samsung phones and you zoom into the moon and then it would you take a picture oh, and Samsung moon? would just Photoshop yeah. a moon in. <laughs> it's like, this is amazing. It's like a NASA picture. And they're like, it is a NASA picture. <laughs> and that's the other it's thing amazing. to think of today, too, though, technically, is like we also have to think about how easy it is to AI footage now. And like just that's pictures. you cannot trust anything no. now on the internet. <laughs> you, well, and people of this like at, and talk about COVID. I think people lost the ability to like stop and think for a second, and they see something and believe it, and then flip to the next video as opposed to mm-hmm. going like, "Hang on, let me look that up and see if that like holds any th- like water at all." And it usually doesn't most of the time. Mm-hmm. But like Jesse said, they comment, "I didn't know that." And then next. they move on. Yeah. And so then people go, "So many people didn't know that either." And neither did I. I <sighs> and you're now, nope. It's fake information. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason for, for none me, of right? you knew what this was. <laughs> We also have investigations just like before. The UAP task force uh, within the Pentagon went and like investigated it, but we don't have any, like we have no idea what the end of that investigation entailed. Um, And the release of the footage contributed to, at that point, the growing interest in UAPs from both public and government officials, leading to calls for more transparency and further investigation, which really directly led to where we are two two years later right now with the Schumer Amendment and Grush and all kinds of stuff happening. the, the the notable aspect of this thing was basically one there was no there was a lack of conventional explanation uh, as to how this thing moved the object displayed flight characteristics that appeared to defy conventional physics and explanation such as the ability to transition seamlessly from air to water and then turn like on a dime without having to change momentum and there was no wreckage found despite a search after it went into the water no wreckage or evidence of the object had been found after it submerged adding to the mystery as well uh, and this incident is part of a series of the UAP encounters acknowledged by the U.S. government, marking a significant shift in how the military encounters with U- uh, UI, uh, UAPs are treated, along with the other similar incidents like the USS Omaha encounter has contributed to a renewed interest in mo- a much more serious approach to the study of UAPs. Uh, and that's kind of like the last high profile uh, that encounter of USOs or really UFOs that we have uh, actual physical evidence of in the terms of photos or videos or, or or witnesses to it from the military other than grush who as much as i love like grush coming forward and he's probably like one of the most uh trustworthy military people that have come forward with this thing he's still passing along hearsay that he got from mm-hmm. the inside you know he never fully friend. saw like a ufo mm-hmm. only that because of his position and what he was working with he was working with the people who were involved with that and then on the other side so he was like that middle guy trying to manage and collect information and he has no reason to doubt those people that he heard it from right and he you know people came forward and and stood up for and like spoke for grush that are still active in the military now um so you know it's it's fascinating but in terms of like usos it's it's fascinating in that usos are really no longer a thing in that uaps have kind of universally under an umbrella all encompassing now like ufos and uaps and us uh, and usos are all the same thing there's a big belief now that we because we've seen them now with with the leaked footage going in and out of the water into the sky being both things. The question is, what is it in the water? And if it's terrestrial or extraterrestrial and what are they doing and why are they watching us? And we don't. That's the frustrating thing is we don't know. And if I was to believe and we, we don't have that technology to go in no. and out of the, like to go out of the water and immediately. No, it's the fly. best no, hiding place the, you could ever be, whether you're here to observe yeah. or whatever. <laughs> 
What, Alex? I'm sorry. I talked over you. It was, it was a bad joke about touristy bo- boat. <laughs> the duck, duck boats. Boat oh, I was yeah. thinking the duck boats or <laughs> LBJ had cars that were also boats. And on his ranch, he'd just put people in his car and just drive into the water as they scream. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd be like, it's a boat, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine Bond. it's Yeah, like he was doing that. He did it in Alligator. <laughs> he did it in five yeah. mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, the topic for me is just endlessly fascinating because Mm -hmm. I just genuinely believe if they're here watching, the ocean is the smartest place for them to be hiding. And like you said, we can't get down there. There's nothing we can do to get down there. And if you read, uh, if you ever go and read and Alex posted it and I said, I would love you guys to go do that uh, is read later after the show, the genetics post that I was referencing, which is what Alex linked. It's because there's a talk how. The grays, which is what he was studying, the bodies of the grays, they're not actually gray skin. They're actually a really pale skin. The gray on the outside is like a thin biofilm that they wear on top that like repels water yeah. like a duck, like a duck's Ooh. back. Like it, it does, like it just allows them to move through. And the black like eyes, peel. they don't have yeah. black eyes. It's an eye covering of equal thinness. It's like a goggle. Yeah, they yeah. just peel them See, off. See, that's what... And I think that's how we kind of got into the whole concept of an underwater extraterrestrial because during, when we were studying the aerial school phenomenon, the drawings that the kids did, they talked about that their skin was black and sort of like a neoprene, yes. like a scuba mm-hmm. suit, and that they had these big black glass eyes that maybe would be like the face of scuba mm-hmm. gear. <laughs> yes, exactly. And now we're seeing like, we're you know, the genetics posts taking it as true, even though we have no way to prove that it's true. Yeah. He just talks about how like, that's what, that's the, their repels. It probably protects them from, you know, little weather events that they're not used to, but also the fact that they can likely walk underwater with it, no problem. Or like water would just kind of uh, wash over them. It makes it interesting because it, it kind of fits in line a little bit with what we believe we know about USOs and their ability to be transmedium mm-hmm. craft of in and out of the water without any resistance. It would make sense that if there are pilots in them for whatever reason, they would wear similar things to keep them as easily able to move through rough water or whatever, uh, d- depending. It's just, it is also a TikTok out there that I saw, which again, it's a TikTok, but it's like one of those like caught film footage things. And I shared it with the boys back when it came out and I never saw it really pop up other than that one time where it's like, what looks to be like gloved doctor with like a body of what looks like to be a gray and uh the but the gray film is off of it and you just see the pale white skin and then he goes mm. in with tweezers and you see him pinch and pull off the eye covering and so the black yeah, eye thing that. gets peeled off yeah. and underneath you see what looks like a human eye that's just like three times larger with the just like Humongous. pale blue iris around it which we were saying if you're underwater yeah. and it's super dark you would need larger eyes to take mm-hmm. in more yeah, light because yeah. there's not that much and light you would also there, so have no coloring like fish that live in the mariana trench they're like translucent to be invisible because they yeah. have yeah no there's no sunlight down there may i pose this question they're anime characters is what you're gonna say <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's okay. what I'm saying. no i agree with that i what if they've always been here yeah. They were here before us and they And we crawled out. Yeah, they crawled in or we crawled out. And so it's not as if they've come here. They've just always been here and that's where they live. And if you ask why are they looking at us more now than they ever have before is because we are fucking up the planet more now than we ever have before. And they're like, hey, this is affecting us. Like, we're losing water down here. We need more oxygen down here. You're throwing Coke cans. You send in Victor Vescovo down here. <laughs> This guy in the uh, over by the Titanic, James Cameron, keeps wiggling his dick down here at us. Keep your shit on the land. <laughs> if there are underwater peoples, societies, etc., even if they're deep, deep in the Meg Ocean, what if they have the technology to pop out of the water to mess with all of our technology to really screw us over, and we were destroying their world? Why wouldn't they just wipe us out? Why are they like we bring you peace? Don't mess with us, kids symbiotic like, but what if they're like f these guys yeah, we don't perhaps need they're benevolent i th- and, and well and like we were what were we watching heather that it said after like major um natural disasters or wars that there's a lot more sightings as if they're coming to like help repair or you know because perhaps they do need resources that we have on earth i have this theory that the reason they abduct cows is because they need vitamin D from the milk because they don't get any vitamin yeah. D because they're at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> so they, perhaps like us fucking up the earth is also fucking stuff up for them. So they're like, hey, chill out up there. 
But if they if they need stuff up here and we're destroying it, then that is going to impact their livelihood as well. Yeah, I mean, I I remember the uh, what's that show called? Unsolved Mysteries. Encounters like, too just came out where they yeah. talk a lot about this. Yeah, yeah. The the well, there was the the one sighting that's like in I think it's like Great Lakes where the ship comes and like takes a bunch of water and mm-hmm. like from the freshwater mm-hmm. lakes that aren't the ocean, and it's like maybe the ocean is starting to get a little too gross for the for the mm. for our water boys pollution yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> for our water boys. Get that water boy <laughs> yeah could be that's the sequel to water boy and it's about how he was an alien the whole time <laughs> that's why he talks like that yeah d- just the idea of them i don't know why they would yeah what would they would need why they would not wipe us out i mean i guess yeah maybe like they sweet could milk, just be baby. benevolent. That sweet, sweet um, milk. Oh, which reminded me if you go and if you do read the genetics post there's also they talk about how well, the gray aliens themselves seem to be like biological drones almost, like there to serve a purpose. Um, and if uh, when he was talking about what he found in the genetics of the thing was that it was a mix of like human, I mean, not human, Earth terrestrial like DNA and then something that he didn't recognize. It was very simple, unlike our human DNA, where there's like 99% of it is junk just from ev- evolutionary dead ends as we didn't need things as we kind of evolved. Burn on humans. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. We're just 99% junk. I didn't need a DNA test to tell me that. <laughs> what, with what I eat, I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these things supposedly had no evolutionary dead ends. It was all just like perfectly like made almost like in a way that mm. nature couldn't do. And if they are self-replicating and creating themselves, there's the theory that maybe they're doing animal uh, – like you know, uh, scooping out an- animal parts for the DNA to continue to create more of them as opposed to because – they just love the taste of like only the purest cow assholes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> maybe they need that so stuff pure. because it helps them like just make more of them yeah. over time. Who fucking knows? Or just ingredients. Yeah, just mm-hmm. ingredients. In the cake of the alien. Yeah. Easy Animal ingredients. Crossing. Cows, because humans have been farming cows forever. They're everywhere, right? So that's mm-hmm. easy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Are we it's still the serfs then? Is that what I'm learning here? <laughs> I, think so. I think so oh man bad news but it, things will get better when you die so it's okay there's something to look forward yeah. to go to the you gotta go to Fortnite uh, when but, you die but, so the, then, the, yeah. some stuff haven't stopped existing dude you know they just got turned they just got called lower sure. you know middle class middle lower class mm-hmm. upper middle class is like what the merchants used to be back in the, back in the day yeah, you know that, that they get to wear humans. fancy clothes but right. they're not lords now we're called influencers yeah now yeah. we're called influencers <laughs> 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 oh man that's all i got I mean, we're, we're already an hour and a half in uh you know i can sit here and talk about usos all day long but oh, um certainly we talk about all this oh, shit all yeah. day long. yeah no i could i really really could spend hours talking you guys about just it. fit it's, right into the vibe it's 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 like five is a lot for a podcast like let's be real it's a lot of people on one pike podcast but it feels like you guys have been talking to us for years Oh yeah, hey. it's yeah. Like Appreciate we said, it. we all got to get together and just have a beer. Yeah, have a beer, yeah. have Yell an edible, and sky. figure yeah. out what the fuck <laughs> is going it. on down there. Fives. We're gonna solve it. It's gonna be us. We'll invite Victor Vescovo because yeah. I think he's got it. He can get us in the uh, submersible. So I don't we can know if I want to go into the submersible. I'm good. Yeah, on that. I'm not. You, I'm you not wouldn't... down. I'm not. I'm not going His down is there. Safe. Mostly, there's an episode where it springs a leak. It's a whole deal. But... <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. He's still alive. So, but there's also an episode where he's trying to gracefully <laughs> exit the submersible onto the main ship. And a gust of wind just straight up blows him off, and he is oh my really God. tries to save face. But it's he like just a Mr. Bean. It. It's like Steve Zissou. We Zissou. watched it yeah. so many times. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he Incredible. just slips and falls. We're like, rewind it, run it back. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks so, so much. much. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely Heather's coming over later to f- film some cameos. So we're uh, oh, now yeah. we're just gonna read this DNA article and please do <laughs> figure it all out. If you can't trust a person who says I'm a molecular biologist on a now deleted reddit account from five months ago who can you so, trust okay so this? hey i'm gonna throw this at you you're gonna you're gonna learn this when you read it so one a bunch of geneticists came into the post and asked him questions to prove okay. if like he actually knew what he was talking about and he did like which was very bizarre which is really cool but uh two he was answering people's questions and at some point his answers stopped showing up and the mods popped in and said we didn't do it but you've been shadow banned so he started editing his post to have the answers in the main post to the people and like that were asking him below. And then about nine hours later, his account was deleted and the mods Uh can't figure out how it happened. They can only see that he didn't delete it. It was deleted like outside of his, uh, his account. Like 
Nobody knows. We don't know. It's I, very I know. weird. I the government. Knows. The government. It was the CIA. That's what, yeah, I mean, that's what, obviously the, the leap. So. That's obviously the leap. But uh, it's a, it's a good read, if only for saying like. If this did did if this dude did fake it, he did his research and he did a very good job. Dude, that little robot from Reddit is an alien. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what it is. The robot from Reddit. He was trying yeah. to keep himself under. Reddit. A alien, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining us, Heather and Christy from Sinisterhood. When do you when do your new episodes usually drop? Tell the people when they can find your stuff. Our main feed episodes drop on Wednesdays, and we have uh, the guest episodes and also listener stories on Fridays for our Freaky Friday awesome. segment. Yeah, so yeah. we'll have the link to your podcast below. Uh, any any and all places you can find them, you can. Uh, go ahead and click and follow them and listen to their show. They're fantastic. And we did one recently. Go on there. Yeah. Listen to it. Yes. Yeah. We're there from was, like a month or two ago. It was great. If and you uh, can't, if, if you didn't get enough alien talk in this episode, <laughs> go listen to that Freaky Friday. Go listen. <laughs> and make sure you head uh, check out our YouTube channel at Sinister Red Podcast because we are recently uh, uploading video versions of our episodes. Yeah. So you can see us. And we also have all the audio back on there. And we do clips sometimes from our Patreon live streams when we have a particularly off the wall segment. <laughs> we'll uh, upload it like when I dressed fully as a corn skull and uh <laughs> and christy was dressed as a detective i appreciate yeah, that I, it was a effort. halloween episode i need to find you yeah. just for fun it's just every day here yeah no, that's just heather's attire when i come over they, you guys have more fun i make them watch neil breen movies you guys dress up. We also we might watch watch we're gonna have to check that out too, you're gonna for have sure. to you're gonna have to. and jesse we'll let you know our thoughts maybe one day we can all watch a, a neil breen movie together i just oh yeah, yeah. let's do it i just don't want that for you I you deserve so much better. <laughs> the lords of thank shit. You. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you guys again. Thank you all listening for uh, being here. We're off to go do a mini soda over at patreon.com slash Illuminati pod. We appreciate Great you. Website. We love you. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Any technology is a compromise with the laws of physics. You know what I mean? Damn. It's wise. It's a poetic way to say that. Yeah, that was Alex. Very poetic. <laughs> Sorry we all shitted on you up, up top. You're great. It's all right. Hey, I'm a, I'm a grower, not a shower. It's just a man. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Illuminati Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by the... I don't know who they are. There's two... What? Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer. No. Neo and Trinity. No. I don't understand, and I probably never will. Let me just tell you right now that there's two... Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. I'm telling you, I think he literally just looked up famous duos. Cheech and Chong. And has been going through the list ever since. I'm trying to dig deep. Which one of you is, uh... Dick Powell. Me? Your name's Jesse Cox. <laughs> I want to lose you I want my body. I want to lose you I want my Welcome back to the Illuminati Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by Alex and Jesse. Like a shooting star across the sky that's actually a UFO.